Hello everyone, this is Adam Jacobs with Click, Senior Solution Architect on the Federal Team. Today we're going to talk about how to reduce the number of REST connections in your Click environment by utilizing a loop function combined with the with connection string inside of a REST data connection. So the challenge that we see a lot of our customers have is that if they have data coming from REST connections that requires a very specific endpoint to get to the data, the problem is that users have to create all of these different data connections for each specific endpoint. And especially if there are a lot of possible endpoints, the number of data connections in an environment just starts getting out of control. So this can cause so slow performance in the data load editor. Um, not only that, it's very, very cumbersome for users to have to uh, insert multiple different connections when they're trying to uh, get a lot of these different endpoints into their application. So what we're going to discuss is how to reduce all of those different data connections down to a single data connection inside of Click. So in our application here we actually have two different REST connections that we're going to use. Um, the first is a REST connection that just serves to grab a number of values. In our case here, what we're doing is we're going to be uh, cycling through county FIPS codes to be able to pull information about um, opioid prescriptions in a particular state, in this case, West Virginia. The problem with the REST connector around grabbing the different um, values for West Virginia and uh, all of the different um, prescriptions is that the endpoint requires entering in an individual FIPS code in order to get the data. So what we're doing here is we're first going to actually load in all of the different county FIPS that we need in this particular REST connection. So this one is quite a simple REST connection. The table is going to be named FIPS. This is pretty much entirely written automatically by click. The only thing I changed was that I renamed uh, the table from root to FIPS. So now let's move to the part where we actually loop through the connection to get all of the data that we're looking for. So this consists of a few different parts. So the first part here is we are defining the uh, variables that we will use to actually determine which record we're looping through at any given point and how many times we loop through. So variables for the current record and the loop times. Of course the current record is going to start at zero so that's the initial setting we're going to put this at. Next we actually want to start the loop function. So this starts the loop and you'll see it will go from, from one all the way through the number of loop times. And you can see that the loop times is actually determined by the number of rows in my FIPS uh, table that I've loaded in from before. So I like to indent inside of a loop just to keep me honest on where I actually am inside of a script. But at this point here, we're, what we're seeing is that we are going to define another variable here. So this is the variable that changes inside of the with connection function. This is important. So this is always going to actually define what the FIPS code is each time we loop through. And it's going to start from the first FIPS code, going to the second, the third, the fourth, etc. Um, you can see that what it's doing is it's saying, hey, let's pull uh, this from uh, let's make this vfips we're doing a peak function here so what we're doing is we're pulling the value of county fips we're making sure that it pulls the specific record which is calling the current record variable here zero means that it's actually the first record so on and so forth and then all the way through that um, that fips table and we're making sure we're calling it from the fips table all right then we start the actual connection to the uh, specific REST connector. Um, we have the SQL statement here. So the SQL statement uh, starts with the select. It selects from the uh, um, REST connection what fields we actually want. 
All of this is written automatically by the REST connection when you select the data you want to add. Same with the root table here. All of this is automatically selected. What I've changed is right here. So this is the actual with connection function. Uh, that will insert and change the REST connection properties. So what we're doing here is this REST connection has basically three property, main properties to it. There's the URL where the REST connection resides, which is grabbing this table called county FIPS data from the REST connection. Then there's the different queries. So there's two queries that ultimately come from this particular uh, REST connection. One is defining the FIPS query, and one is defining the key, making sure we have access. The key in this case always remains the same, it's uh, WAPO. Um, but the FIPS, this is where we're calling the actual variable. You can see that this is the same variable that we defined up here. This variable is now going to change every single time we loop through. Scrolling down a little bit further, what we want to do uh, before we go to the next loop is we actually want to redefine the current record. So what this is doing is this is saying, hey, we're going to change the current record from what it was before. In this case, at the first one, it's going to say, well, the current record was zero, but we're going to add one to it. And now that we add one to it, now we can um, restart the loop. And so now this will go, now with next Z, it's going to go back up to here and start the loop all over again. So what does this end up looking like? Well, let's start loading the data and let's find out. Okay, so now that the load script is finished, what we can see is that we have looped through that REST connector a number of times. It took about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. We were looking at uh, looping through about 25 values here. So if we close this out, what we can see is if we look at the uh, data model, we'll find that the uh, tables are not actually 25 separate tables, but instead these are all different, uh, the, the table was actually put into a single table. So um, because all of the values were exactly the same, or all the field names, I should say, were exactly the same between all 25 tables that we grabbed from the REST connector, Click automatically concatenated them. So if you think about what this means, that once you start looping through these values and you start creating uh, these um, sort of larger tables, the way to actually implement this inside of a uh, production environment is you have apps that are designed to loop through these REST connectors and then you can store these values in QVDs uh, making those QVDs available to your standard end users to grab the data that they need. This is a great way to maintain data management, make sure that people are not creating duplicate connections to different REST connectors um, and it's just an overall uh, best practice that, uh, that you want to implement to um, keep those data connections down uh, when looking at uh, how you want to put together all of, get your data and put together your environment.